y'all and welcome into the kitchen. Uh, I'm back in here gonna cook some supper and I thought I'd make a casserole because next week I'll be going back to A&M and Troy can pull it out and have some meals for a couple of days. So I'm gonna, what I'm making normally I would stuff into big macaroni shells and I have some somewhere but I put them up in a good place and I can't find them. So I'm going to just make a casserole instead of stuffing it into shells. And it is a chicken cordon bleu casserole. Easy, delicious, freezes well, and I thought y'all would like to have it in your recipe box. So come on over to the butcher block. I got a little bit of prep to do. I've already, now I use the breast off of a rotisserie chicken. Troy likes the drumsticks and thighs, the wings most of the time. He didn't like the white meat. So I had enough left that I could put it in this casserole. So I'm using that. But you could boil dark or white meat, your choice, or use rotisserie, or use some of your canned chicken. And I would have used canned chicken if I hadn't had this that needed to be used. And you're gonna need ham, of course, and some crisp fried bacon. So we've gotta get some bacon chopped up and fried and drained. So, and I've got a great with cheese. So I'm just gonna let y'all come over here and watch me do all this, and I might talk to you a little bit while I'm doing it. Okay, the first thing I've got to do is just chop, I'm just going to chop my bacon with these kitchen scissors from Pampered Chef into little pieces and fry it till it's crisp. And I'm going to save that bacon grease because that is gold. I've got a little container over here that I pour it in, and when I get a pretty good bit, I put it in a pint jar in the ice box so it'll keep without getting rancid. But I season lots of stuff with bacon grease. Sometimes my scissors want to gnaw instead of cut. I may be holding them the wrong direction. Sometimes if I flip them over, they do better. I don't know. This is some bacon that I had bought at Sam's several years ago, and I vacuum packed it. It's that that comes layered between uh, butcher paper, parchment paper, whatever, and it was like $19.99 on sale for 10 pounds when I bought it, because I bought four of them. I was at Sam's a couple of days ago, and that same bacon is $49.95 now for the package. You believe that? It was about three or four years ago, but that's quite a, a price increase. A lot of times for this, I would have just used bacon ends and pieces, but I had this in the ice box, and since I'm going to be gone next week, I thought I'd go ahead and use it because I sure don't want it to go bad. Okay, I'm going to put this on the stove on the medium and just let it uh, cook till it's crisp. I need to cut up some um, ham and I don't have any, uh, in other words, I haven't cooked the ham for a meal. So I like um, ATV sandwich ham and I'm going to use this mesquite uh, smoked ham. And I'm just going to cut it in little pieces, and it'll be stirred in, and give it that good smoky ham flavor. And I sharpened my knife myself this morning, and I did a pretty good job. I depend on Troy to do so much, and he wasn't here, so I did it. Okay, I've got that done, and what I want to do is break it up some. And then I'm gonna grate a couple of cups of Swiss cheese. And I would have cheated and bought that that's already grated, but they had everything but Swiss at H-E-B when I went. And they usually have everything I need. We have a small, yucky H-E-B in Cleveland, very yucky. I keep hearing we're going to get a new good one, but so far they hadn't started any construction. But I do go in there in a pinch to keep from driving 15 miles to Kroger. It's 5 miles to H-E-B. 15 miles the other direction to Kroger, so. 
sometimes I do it that way. Okay, that little package made a cup. So let's see what size package I bought. I think it was 12 ounces. That package was 8 ounces. So an 8 ounce package of that sandwich meat cut up in little cubes and separated made uh, a cup. So I'm going to cook my bacon, grate my cheese, my chicken's already cooked, got to cook my pasta for tossing into the casserole. And we'll have us a yummy casserole, and Troy will have a good meal when he gets home today. I'll use this grater. Let me get me something to let it fall on so it'll be easier to round it up when I get it grated. I got these little cutting mats one time at... Um, Cracker Barrel, and I wished I'd bought more of them. I did have more, but I gave some for gifts for friends that like chickens. But I like them. They're flexible and pretty. Alright, come here, scissors. I like for those strong warm boys to be here to break for me. And they will do that if they're here. But since they're not here, I'll do it. I only have to stay at A&M. We get to come home Thursday because they're out for Good Friday. So I'll get to come home Thursday. We'll go Sunday evening. And this is Saturday. But I'll uh, y'all will see this sometime next week while I'm not here. But I'll go Sunday, and normally we come home Friday, but since she's out for Good Friday, we need to come home Thursday. April needed to tend to some stuff. There's always lots of paperwork to do. I would say that that's two cups, but I could measure. But you can't have too much cheese. You can't be too thin, too rich, or have too much cheese or garlic. Okay, I'm going to set it over here just in case I want to do some more. Okay, I'm going to keep crisping off this bacon. And I'm going to go find my pasta. And I'll be back here in just a little bit. And we'll make us a casserole. My bacon is brown, so I'm going to get it out. And I've got me a plate here with some paper towel on it. Try to drain it a little bit. Keep all the grease I can in here to use later. Sometimes I want to cook some green beans, and I don't really have time to render the bacon down and use the bacon and the grease, so I'll just season with this bacon grease, because that's how southern folks do. You get the same flavor, but you don't have the little bits of meat in there. And my kids would rather that way, because they don't like the bacon, pieces of bacon. When that cools a little bit, I'll put it into my uh, bacon, my bacon grease keeper. Now I'm going to use a bag of egg noodles instead of the big pasta shells because I don't have them. I could use elbow macaroni or whatever, but I think I'm going to do egg noodles. So I'm going to get a pot of water on to boil them and get them tender. Your hummingbirds are fighting out there. There's always one old king daddy that thinks he's not going to let nobody else have some of that good stuff. When they've already drank a bunch, I need to refill that. Anyhow, y'all, when I'm looking crazy when I'm videoing, I'm seeing hummingbirds out the wind, and I can't help but watch them. Okay, I'm going to get this boiling. 
and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got eight ounces of cream cheese in here, and it's soft where I can mix it. Now, the recipe doesn't call for it, but I love the combination of sour cream and cream cheese. So I added about three-fourths of a cup of sour cream. You can add it or leave it out. It won't be in the recipe, but it'll be in here. Then we want to add a teaspoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, a half of a teaspoon of salt, and I put about a half a teaspoon of black pepper that I freshly ground with my pepper grinder. So I just got to get this all mixed. Get me a spat so that I can scrape the sides with. Now my water is almost up to a boil and when you're cooking pasta you want to put some seasoning, some salt, whatever in the water because that's the only opportunity you have to get flavor into the pasta. As it rehydrates it'll absorb some of your flavor and uh, you won't have just bland pasta with stuff on it. So I like to put a little garlic powder in mine, of course. Salt and a little onion powder. So let me get this taken care of over here. Little onion powder, just sprinkle some in. Garlic. And I shouldn't hold that up over the steam, but I did. And I'm just gonna put some salt in there just to Soft those noodles a little bit. My green oven just beats me every time. I can hardly tell it is it's ready. Now this is uh, 12 ounces of egg meal. And I'll cook them for about seven minutes, I think, is what it'll be. And I'll check to see if they are, I don't want them to boil over. I'll come back and check and see if they're ready. The egg noodles are cooking. I've got this mixed up pretty well. I'm going to add in my ham, one cup of ham, a cup of chicken, your choice, dark or light meat. It, it needs to be cooked. like. And then I'm going to kind of mix this around and I've got to add the bacon in. Now, if you were stuffing your shells, you'd want your meat a little bit smaller. But since I'm making a casserole, I just cut it in almost one inch pieces on the chicken. Then I need to put my bacon in here. Oh, Lord, I need to stir this before it boils over for me. Down just a hair. Mmm, bacon makes anything good. It's like butter. Better, better, better. And we need about a one cup of the uh, shredded Swiss cheese. Then what I'm going to do is get this all mixed, and then while my noodles are hot after I drain them, I'm going to toss it all together, and then we'll put the topping on it. That'll kind of disperse it a little bit better, because with it with stuff real cold, it doesn't melt very good in here. Okay, I know y'all don't want to watch me stir all day, so when the noodles get done and I get them drained and ready to finish up, I'll be right back. Okay, my buzzer went off, so my noodles are done, and I'm going to drain them, and then I'm going to put them in this bowl and stir them all up. I hope they fit in there. I'll do some of them and then some more. I think I just need to get a big old bowl, don't I? Let me 
We'll find a bigger bowl of that and stir that in. That one was big enough to mix my stuff in up, but I'm not going to get to stuff something because I didn't have what I needed, so couldn't find my hiding place. I'm going to get this mixed up and in the casserole dish, and then I'll bring y'all back and uh, show you what we're going to do to the top of it. We're going to put our uh, noodles and mixture into this 9 by 13 casserole dish. Let me get all the goodness. Okay. Just going to kind of spread it around, but I don't want it too tight, and you'll see why. We're going to pour a bottle of Alfredo sauce over this. You have to lick your finger if you get something good on it. Just going to pour it over it and let it drizzle down in. Now see how it would be wonderful if this was the noodles, I mean the shells. But I didn't have what I needed. Well, I got them. I just don't know where I put them. Tell the truth. And I can make homemade Alfredo, but I spend a whole lot more money trying to make it than when I buy a jar. Okay, now I'm just going to kind of not stir it in real big, but I want some of it all down in there because I'm not going to be lifting a shell out with it on it. And if you wanted it creamier, you could add another jar. I'm just going to use one jar because we're going to put some more cheese up on the top. And actually, I was supposed to save bacon for the top, and I forgot. So we're just going to have Swiss cheese on the top of ours. But it should have some crunchy bacon. But I got just happy putting it all in there and forgot to save a little bit out for pretty. And I do have a package of bacon bits, but I don't really like to use those unless I put them in the skillet and get rid of some of the fat on them. Now when it comes out of the oven, if you have some parsley or you want to chop some green onion blades on the top, um, it would be pretty. Let's clean it up a little bit. Get it over there in a 350 degree oven until it's all hot and bubbly. Then I'll bring y'all back in here and show you what it looks like. We'll let it cool down a little bit. Ooh, that's heavy. Isn't that pretty? It's gonna be prettier when that cheese is browned. Let me get it in the oven and I'll be right back. I got it out of the oven and I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of dried parsley because I don't have any fresh parsley on the top. Just just for something. There you have it. When it cools down, I'll uh, get it close where y'all can see it real good and then I'll scoop some of it out and show you what it looks like. It's just about cool enough that I can uh, dip some of it out and taste it without burning my mouth up. So I was going to just give y'all a quick little look at it. Hey y'all, I'm going to taste this casserole that I've got dished up here and then when Troy gets home, he'll have a good meal to eat. It's still pretty hot, but let's see. I want some bacon and some ham and some chicken. That's a big old bite, but I've got a pretty good sized mouth, so let's see here. 
Mm. If people don't like that, they got something wrong with them. That is scrumptious. My daddy would say, yumbity scrumptious bugs. It's very good. That Swiss cheese, I just love the flavor that it gives something. So y'all need to try this one. Now remember, if you want to make the shells, you cook your shells according to the package and you have to drain them and set them aside. And then you would mix everything together but save half of the Swiss cheese and some of the bacon. And then you mix that together and you put a couple of tablespoons in each shell and line them in your 9 by 13. Then you pour the Alfredo over them, sprinkle some bacon and cheese on the top. But if you want to just make a casserole, use whatever kind of pasta you want to use and stir it in just like I did. This is easier, not quite as elegant and pretty, but delicious. So I hope y'all will try it. Comment down below and let me know if you liked it. And um, come back in a day or two and I'll have something else up here. I really, really, really am working on that apron video because I need to make some money and y'all need to wear some aprons. So I'll try to get that done uh, maybe for Saturday, but don't hold me to it. It may be Tuesday after Easter because I'm going to be gone till Thursday night. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. Make you some preparations for an Easter dinner. Gather that family around the table. If, if half of them's missing, make the half that's there just as special as if the house was full. You know, have some goodies, have some good food, put your cell phones down and don't turn them on. Spend some time looking each other in the eye and smiling and talking, reminiscing and making good memories. One of these days, good memories from how good it was when we were thinking right now it's pretty bad. This might be good later. Y'all need to make some memories, so give the Lord his due. Don't forget to thank him for what Easter's all about. Give him some praise and some thanks. Honor him. Go to his house. Visit with him some. Talk to him every day. Make sure you're on the right team, his team. I'll see y'all in a day or two. The Lord bless you.